peut-être Voilà. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so just a small introduction. I'm working here with Luker uh, about two years. And about two years ago was the my uh, first <clears throat> presentation here, Look at Looker. Uh, I've put this re the reference to recording in the uh, refer slide references. In case if you are not aware what is Looker and what are the key uh, features of it, uh, feel free to watch and get known with it. Uh, the embedding topic is actually advanced usage of Looker. So it's not for beginners. And I hope that just with a small recap, uh, we can we can proceed even with those who doesn't know, doesn't have any looker experience. So, a uh, couple of years ago, acquired by Google, so now it's part of Google Cloud. Uh, the key feature is that it is in database platform. So when you need data, it always queries the database. It doesn't use any um, memory calculations. It does, but not in that way, like uh, Tableau or Power BI does. Uh, what is also important to know about Looker, it is Git-based. So when you create project in Looker, you have semantic model, and it is Git-based project. So your code is versioned and, uh, and have has all the benefits uh, Git can provide you. Uh, Looker content, um, dashboards, looks, explores. Dashboards itself, we can uh, divide into categories. LookML dashboards and user-defined dashboards. They are convertible. You can create a user-defined dashboard from LookML and LookML from user-defined. But LookML dashboards are part of the LookML project and stored in Git. User-defined dashboards, not. Um, so this is very small introduction and recap what is looking. Uh, then uh, we will talk about how we can, uh, what authentication options do we have when embedding Looker components into applications, uh, how to organize development deployment process, what features do we have uh, and can use uh, during the embedding. And we will have a demo application uh, created specially for these purposes uh, using some examples, open source examples from GitHub. Um, this is, to be honest, this is my first web application ever. And probably it's not perfect, but as is. Uh, what is important uh, to think about before you are starting a Looker embedding project? Um, first of all, most likely you will need uh, multiple Looker instances. It is important to consider because Looker is not a cheap solution. It's quite expensive. And for additional instances, you will need to pay. Uh, why so? Um, Looker itself has two modes, production and development. And in most cases, it's enough uh, to cover your development. You can develop in dev branch and preview uh, your results and then deploy to production branch all within Looker ID, uh, but not in case with embedding. Embedding always works with production branch. So you cannot embed something that is in your dev branch. That's why most likely uh, you will need as many Looker instances, as many uh, application instances you have. So if you have uh, some integration instance, QA instance, UAT instance, 
and then prod instance. Most likely for each application instance, you will need to have looker instance. So, and these are additional costs. Uh, then something else additional and um, requiring additional uh, costs is a uh, custom themes. So looker allows uh, customize customizing how your content will look when embedded. And you can adjust this look to, to be similar to your application design. So you, you may have uh, the same fonts, the same colors, um, background colors, tiles, so a lot of options to customize. But this feature is not free. It's not available in standard edition. You will need enterprise, I guess, and also it's about costs. Uh, one more interesting thing is white labeling. Uh, it allows to remove all the looker mentioning from the embedded content. And also it needs to be enabled for additional money. And one more important <laughs> money related stuff. Uh, you need to think about how you will uh, authenticate your users and how you will check them, how many users you will have in your application. Um, because for each user on Looker site, you need to pay. They have some uh, annual fee and uh, it's also important, just on the planning stage, important to know. And the last one, you will need to have admin permissions to the instance, Looker instance, to make all the required settings to enable embedding. Let's go uh, for the uh, authentication options, which we have. They actually uh, demonstrates how uh, Looker embedding evolves. So first of all, public looks, it does not require uh, authentication at all. So you may enable public URLs for, for your looks and use them in the application web pages whenever as a visualization or as a table view. Uh, but in this way, you can use only looks, no dashboards, no export, so a bit limited functionality, but doesn't require authentication at all. Next one is private embedding. It requires a look at native authentication. So the user must have an account on Looker instance. And then in your application, you can have iframe and put there as a source URL to the dashboard or uh, explore or look. Next one is single sign-on embedding. In this case, you do not need to have each user uh, created on a looker site. So accounts are not required there. It's on your responsibility how to authenticate and authorize user. Uh, looker when you uh, create Looker connection, embedded Looker connection, you will just pass uh, user properties, user attributes required for the connection. And that's it. And on Looker side, the external user will be created automatically. And these external users are also counted uh, for payment. So you need to consider how many users you will have. And it's also possible to have multiple users with the same ID. But then some uh, looker features uh, will be limited. Uh, you, will, you cannot do something very user specific. So it's, it's all about choosing the way on the project planning uh, phase. And last one, cookie list. 
It's pretty similar to SSL embedding, but just a bit different approach. Uh, because you may notice that uh, in the text, so all three previous options, they use cookies. And in case if you have Looker hosted instance and your application domain for sure will be not the same, Looker will be, uh, you will have cross domain references, Looker will be third party. And in most browsers now, third party cookies are disabled by default. So the only one I know enabled is Chrome, but they also announced that they will close this very soon. And you, you, you will need to think about to notify somehow users to enable uh, cookies for your application, third party cookies for your application, or use cookie list way. So this is pretty recent way they added, I guess about a year ago. Uh, it doesn't use cookies uh, and they do generate some several tokens and use these tokens for navigation, authentication, uh, what else I don't remember, and have some, some general uh, session token. And application will be will need to track the um, lifetime of, of those tokens and transfer to them. What Looker provides us for embedding? So first of all, Looker has API. Uh, it usually lives on the Looker instance uh, server but has different port. Then they have Looker API SDK. You can use it to access Looker API endpoints. Uh, but it is, it can be used in browser application as well, but actually it's not the, mm, the main purposes. So it's recommended to use them not in browsers. For browser-based applications, they have Looker Embed SDK. Uh, it does not provide access to the whole Looker API, but it has some uh, important web-specific uh, features, functions, methods, including uh, messaging between uh, Looker elements iframes. Uh, returning to multiple instances. Mm -hmm. So we have multiple instances. For example, we already started the project and we have multiple instances. We will use for develop, for look at development, we will use only, only one, the one. And somehow we will need to promote everything we did to the, uh, to the next environment. In the project I participated where we have uh, embedding, we chose the simplest approach. All our dashboards were stored in the LookML project. Uh, we have set up the project on each instance, on each Looker instance with the same name, uh, but uh, same connection name but connection was pointed to proper database according to the instance. And we used the same Git repository, but uh, dev instance was pointed to, uh, okay, let's start from prod. Prod instance was pointed to the master branch and dev instance was pointed to the dev release branch. And this release branches will merge to the master each time when sprint finished, for example. Uh, and then with advanced deployment mode enabled, we just checked on the production instance that nothing is broken and uh, deployed. This is very simplified approach. But in our case, it worked and we have no need to overcomplicate it somehow. 
But if you have uh, user-defined dashboards, which are not part of the uh, LTML project, you will need to move them somehow. And there are uh, third-party open source uh, tools for that. Uh, Gazer, look at the blower. Look at the blower is uh, based on, on it's on top of Gazer. It provides more orchestration features. Then let's go to the features we may have this embedding. So custom embed themes. As I said, it's a paid feature. It should be enabled on demand. And what it allows us to do. So first of all, it's to make your uh, dashboards uh, having the same look and feel as your application. So having the same uh, fonts, same uh, colors, uh, same um, shapes of elements, for example. Um, what is important to remember that custom themes are applicable to dashboards and explores. It's not applicable to looks at all. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, you may have multiple custom themes on your instance, and only one will be default. If during the embedding you do not specify the theme you will use, you want to use, it will use default. Uh, but if you need to use something other, you can uh, specify a specified theme in URL. Uh, also, if you want to have some defined theme, but you need to change a bit, some one property to change, uh, it also can be part of URL. You can specify that this one, I need to have this value, and it will work. Um, and let's see what we can customize. Oh, wait. So in general, uh, we can customize uh, dashboard background, uh, fonts, key colors, text colors. Uh, what I very like, we can customize controls for dashboards. So the title can be uh, hidden. Filters can be hidden. You can hide the export, download, uh, all those uh, control features, you can hide them. Uh, I will show, during the demo, I will show you why it is, it may be useful. Um, so for, there are pretty, pretty a lot of uh, options what we can customize. And I would say it is growing. So now, it's much wider than uh, what we have at least uh, half of the year ago. So look at evolves, look at improves, but still you may face some uh, issues with, even with custom things. For example, I faced that uh, custom visualizations from marketplace, they do not support fonts provided in custom theme. Just to support and use def their default ones. So even with all these customizations, planning your application design, you need to consider how dashboards look and look at dashboards look and how they can look. Let's switch back. Oh, we can switch back, yes. Uh, white labeling. So white labeling is customizing uh, the company reference, looker references in the looker instance itself and embedded elements as well. Uh, with this feature, you can set up your instance in that way that nobody will know this is looker. 
you can put your company name there, you can put your company logo, uh, put custom welcome pages, etc. All the messages in the notifications, downloading. So you can remove uh, looker mentioning from everywhere. And then it will look out like your oven analytics platform. And for embedding, uh, what is useful to customize is removing uh, looker logo from uh, embedded elements, uh, plus uh, generated PDFs, generated outputs, uh, remove uh, looker mentioning from the footer. But again, it also requires additional cost. Um, one more interesting feature to consider is Looker UI components. Initially, as I assume, they were created mostly for Looker extensions. So actually, you can uh, embed Looker into your application, but also you can embed your application into Looker instance. This is called Looker extension. And when you create this Looker extension, you need to look like a Looker. So that's why they created sets of controls uh, for these extensions to, to be Looker-like. But those controls can be used not only in extensions, but in uh, applications where you embed in Looker as well. And initially, I was planning to, uh, to show them in the in the demo application, but playing the samples, checking the documentation, I was a bit disappointed with this feature because actually it does not look like a looker. It has different color set. It it's a bit different, and um, it requires uh, API SDK, not embedded SDK, but API SDK. And this means that on your client application, you will need to initialize it. And for initialization, you will need to have uh, your client ID and secret. And this secret needs to be on, on client, on front-end application, not back-end. So I can show you how they look in the uh, original sample I downloaded from GitHub. Uh, but I have not embedded this into my demo. Um, references. What I've collected here in the references. So a couple of articles about advanced embedding, uh, security best practices, uh, embed JavaScript events. So the, the full list of event, events we can listen to and we can send to uh, Looker components. Uh, recording uh, Gazer Looker Deployer. It's a GitHub reference to this third party tool for deploying Looker content between multiple instances. So it's actually not for, only for deploying dashboards, it can deploy everything. Uh, so it uses Looker API to get uh, metadata, instance metadata from one instance and uh, create copies or just it's just simplified way create copies on the another one uh, then look at looker recording from my previous uh, presentation just to recap what is looker and have more details about that and then two uh, github projects i have used as an example during study and preparing my oven uh, demo uh, my application is a bloody mix <laughs> of uh, those two plus uh, extended with my personal examples. Um, I will give some introduction before showing. So as I said, this is my first web application ever. Uh, it has front-end and back-end. Front-end is React-based, uh, back-end is Actually, mix of everything. <laughs> uh, basically, it's not JS, but I have some TypeScript uh, copied from another example. And let's go here, here. 
uh, we will go through all four options of authentication uh, we discussed. So first of all, public looks. So we can imagine that come on, this is some company page and you want to put some analytics in, into the page. So you can embed it publicly. Uh, what's important to notice? Uh, if, if you have the bounds defined for the measures shown in this uh, look, they will not work for public embedding. So for public embedding, you should prepare special special looks without any uh, further interaction. And of course, you can see powered by Looker. This is the logo, which can be removed with paid white labeling. And you can see it in, as a visualization, but also you can embed this as a table. Um, so enabling public looks is an instance-wide setting. So you should enable it on the instance uh, on admin side, uh, but it's not enough for each look you are going to share publicly uh, admins only admins uh, should enable this on a look level so if you enable it on the instance it doesn't mean automatically all the looks will become publicly available no so admins should, uh, uh, should enable this for each look separately and let's go to the next one private embedding So it requires native authentication. It means that in this browser session, you need to have active looker session or you need to be uh, you need to log in from from your application. And to be able to uh, to show login a page in in the application outside of the looker instance, uh, there is one option you need to enable on the on the looker side. So and I'm going to. Login. And the default dashboard is shown to me. Uh, I would consider this way of, of authentication as a sum interim step in the application development when you are somewhere in the middle you are just starting all the uh, embedding stuff but you already have something developed in looker and uh, want to show in the dashboard so this can be as a interim step and you you can replace it for the this uh, pre-authenticated method um, so here we have uh, controls, your oven application controls to switch between uh, dashboards, show loops, explorers. When you embed explorers, uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, you depend on the permissions your user have on the looker side. So on the application level, you do not control it and you do not know it. And if you are enabling user to allows user to show explorers in case if user does not have export permissions uh, they will see errors here uh, what is um, interesting feature uh, also look at added during the last year i guess uh, enabled embed content so with this uh, navigation you can open even other content available uh, for your user in Looker. And if you have uh, safe content permissions, so you can create some dashboards, some ad hoc queries here and save them on a Looker side. So actually you are enabling user to do some uh, self-service analysis, save the results and then reuse them. So they will be able to save some here and then they will be able to open. 
Uh, this can be uh, dependent on the settings. You can show this feature to users or hide them. Um, um, I think that's it for, for this one. And let's move to the single sign on. These two cards, uh, they all will refer to the same content. The difference is in the way how you initiate the embedded SDK on the uh, front end side. We will emulate the authentication and authorization. And I've created here two roles, basic and advanced. Advanced is Explorer. Uh, this user can run some ad hoc queries using Explorers. Uh, basic is just a viewer. It, it can uh, just view the dashboards without Explorer permissions. Let's start with advanced one. And uh, I have not too many items on the screen, but it has concentrated functionality. Uh, on this first one, we have the dashboard. So the first one, this is embedded dashboard. And the second one is embedded look. Uh, dashboard has cross, cross filtering feature enabled. Uh, users do like this feature. It's very um, impressive. And in the real project, I was participated from application team. There was a question how we can read, uh, react on the user select on somewhere in the dashboard and do some actions on the other application elements. So here is the answer. They'll use messages to communicate between uh, iframes where we have looker elements embedded. And it may look that we are listening now to the uh, filter changed action, but not because cross filtering uh, is adding the filter to filter bar, but it's not the real filter. And in this case, filter changed event is not fired. But we can listen to another event. So when actually this filter added, all the tiles on the dashboard start to query data and reload. So I'm listening to the tiles events and the current filters from the tile events. And if filter state is changed from the from what we had save it as a application variable, then I fire the message to this loop to pass the filters here and to run, uh, run values with the filters. So you can see I've chosen chains and here in the returned items, we have chains only. Um, what? else interesting with this, with messaging. In case if you have uh, custom things enabled and you hide the controls, and now you can see why it's, it might be useful to hide. Look how many vertical space it takes. So it may be reasonable to hide them at all and uh, put proper buttons icons somewhere else. So in case if this is hidden, but you still need to allow user to download or uh, set up schedule, you also can uh, send the message to the iframe to show schedule dialog in this case. Uh, another uh, custom features you may need, depending on the use case, for example, Depending on the user role, something on the dashboard should be hidden. So something is not allowed for, for this specific user. And you can manage the uh, dashboard layout. So you might hide some items. 
you may even change the colors and even texts in the tiles. So here I will hide these three uh, total single value tiles and I can show them back. And when we will choose another uh, role, basic one, for that user, by default, they will be hidden. Uh, what else, which other use cases you may have? You may have the use case that you need to allow user to download some uh, dashboard aggregated data, but without showing on the, uh, on the screen at all. So it's not about the embedded uh, Now we will use uh, API SDK. So and the, on the application backend part, we have the endpoint to download some uh, to download dashboard providing the dashboard ID, and this one will render us PDF for business pulse. We do not see them. It, see it in the application, but we, but we will get the outputs. I, I oh, it's here. So you have the PDF downloaded. Uh, also with getting the data from the dashboard. By default, uh, you can download, um, no not with these permissions. Uh, in, in general, Looker allows to download dashboard data. It exports each tile as a CSV, and then combines them into a zipped file and, and uh, returns your result. You may have a use case that user want to see it as an Excel and separate sheet for each tile and having the data there. And again, this is about using uh, API SDK, not uh, embedded SDK. On my uh, backend part, so I have implemented endpoint which uh, takes the dashboard, all the dashboard elements, uh, all the dashboard tiles, and gets the data from each file. And then using uh, Excel uh, library, combines everything together into one sheet, uh, worksheet and returns to the user. Uh, <clears throat> Explorers are pretty similar to what we seen uh, with private embedding. So actually it uses uh, quite, uh, works quite similar. Uh, in other case, you may need some to visualize something um, which Looker does not have visualization for. Um, this is example how we can create something custom using Looker as a data provider, not a data visualizer. So here are top 10 brands with uh, some aggregated uh, metrics for each brand, but plus they have sales trends. So their sales number of uh, purchases uh, for last 12 months. So for Looker, it's uh, two different data sets, different granularity. And what I did uh, on my backend, actually on Looker side, I've created two looks one to get uh, top 10 brands with uh, this uh, brand level aggregation uh, another look to have uh, monthly sales for each uh, this uh, brand as a filter and when i uh, uh, backend endpoint runs first look gets the top 10 brands then takes second look puts the uh, those received top brands as a filter and gets sales data for all those uh, 10 brands. And then merges these two data sets and returns to the client and client just using the JavaScript uh, creates a visualization. So this 
top 10 brands actually returns that brands and then all, all the brand items and then for sales, sales are as array, an array of months and array of uh, values. Um, then let's switch. Important thing about cookies. So now we are in Chrome. Uh, cookies, third party cookies are enabled. And if we open the same in the um, incognito mode, you can see that uh, standard SSO embedding doesn't work. But if we go to the cookies list, It works. So it looks like cookies list one uh, is going to be a trend because of browsers. And Looker have to um, drive this approach and enhance the functionality. Uh, I think that's it for my application itself. But I would also want, I wanted you to show you um, those two applications, two uh, GitHub applications I referenced. We need to refresh because this one expired. Um, embedded reference one, uh, it doesn't have cookies embedding uh, as example, uh, but it has, uh, Looker components here, so you, you can see how they work. And different other features I haven't shown you. Um, when you embed Explore, you can also not just uh, allow user to set up something, but you can uh, embed Explore with URL, providing already predefined fields, visualization options, and in this case, it will be shown just a visualization without uh, filters, without uh, options to see uh, um, data, underlying data, and without options to change. So, but this can be a replacement for books, uh, which cannot use custom themes, for example. So this is explored and custom themes are applicable here. What else to show here is a visualization component. So that ones, which I was disappointed with, uh, it requires SDK, SDK API. And as for me, it's a bit buggy because if you specify the size of the outputs you want to achieve, it's it makes uh, what they want, but not what you want. You cannot be sure that size will be what you asked. So this is a pie chart created as a visualization component. So here we do not have any iframe. Uh, also, they have pretty limited types of charts they can uh, embed in this way. Uh, and this example is visualization component with filter. So it's pretty uh, dynamic. You do not need to click any button, etc. It will filter data very quickly. Uh, but in this case, you need to set up this uh, min and max values, for example, in this case. They are not data driven, they are hard coded. And one more uh, interesting example here uh, of looker components. This is dashboard uh, with filters. Uh, filters are as a looker component. In case if you have hidden controls, hidden filter bar uh, for your embedded dashboard, uh, you can still can read the uh, filter elements from the dashboard definition and put them here as a looker components. But again, uh, it's a bit buggy because, for example, for created year, we have control 
looker, looker control uh, to uh, pretty flexible to set up the range. Uh, but when you have looker element, uh, it doesn't work. But for for drop downs, it may be useful because it's pre-populated with data-driven uh, elements. Um, and this is second example I have used. Uh, this one includes uh, cookie-less uh, code sample. Mm -hmm. two pages, just a standard one and um, more specific to messaging between elements. You can run, you can stop too soon. So if you are interested in the uh, development details, you can check uh, this uh, GitHub repositories. You can contact me directly if you have any uh, code specific uh, questions. I will switch now back to the uh, presentation.